Hi, I'm Joe Barima. This is the $1 Story Contest. Thank you again for all of the submissions. Uh, let's take a listen to this episode's winner. So this is a story about sneaking in, about pulling a caper. And it comes from someone you probably would not expect. We rec- are we recording? or Someone that you trust. Someone that you actually may let into your home every Sunday. And how long do you want? What are you looking for? Yep, that's the voice of Stuart McLean, host of the Vinyl Cafe. Though probably, like you, I don't know him personally, I certainly never pegged him as the CBC's bad boy. But that's now changed. So when I was 16, I uh, lived in Montreal, uh, stone's throw from the Montreal Forum, where the, uh, all the big acts would come. It was just the beginning of rock and roll touring. And I was, a, I guess, a, a fledgling journalist. It wasn't enough for me to go to the shows. I, I had to be behind stage. I wanted to be behind stage because I wanted to be part of the action. So I devised my little technique as to how I got backstage. And I, I managed to get myself backstage at both a Beatles and a Rolling Stones concert. And my technique was that I would uh, I'd get myself all dressed up in a shirt and a tie and uh, good pants. And I would uh, head down to the forum. And there was a little corner snack bar, Moe's Corner Snack Bar, on the corner of Classe and uh, De Maisonneuve, uh, right near the forum. And I would go in there, I'd take off my winter coat. These things always happen in wintertime. So I was now a guy in shirt sleeves in the middle of winter with a shirt and tie, looking respectable, but looking like he belonged inside rather than outside. And I would walk to the stage door of the forum, and there were always a group of young girls hanging around the stage door wanting to get in or waiting for autographs. And when they saw me coming, they, they assumed that I belonged back there, and uh, so they immediately latched themselves onto me, take me in, take me in, take me in. And then I'd knock on the stage door and some security guard would open the door and he'd be confronted by this screaming mob of girls all holding on to me. And I would look at him I would look at him and fix him with my eyes firmly and I would say, don't let any of them in. And then I'd walk by him. And he would, uh, he'd be uh, like caught. And even if, he, if he'd had an inkling that maybe I didn't belong there, by the, I would keep going, and so he would have to have caused a fuss to stop me. If you, if you cause a fuss, you're afraid that it might, the fuss might turn on you. And I, I disappeared, and he thought, well, it's going to be more trouble to cause a fuss than I cause. So now I'm backstage, then I'd hang around, and that way I got into the uh, Rolling Stones dressing room. Uh, watched Keith Richards arrive reach uh, onto the table where there was Coke, was there were bottles of Coke everywhere, open a bottle of Coke, dump half the Coke onto the floor, reach into his breast pocket and get a Mickey of whatever it was, Jack Daniels, and pour it into the bottle of Coke. That was my moment with Keith Richards. Uh, and then I was escorted out of the dressing room. Beatles came to town, and, and there were two shows. There was an afternoon show and an evening show. And they... Uh, had a press conference in between the shows on stage, which was a brave thing to do because they had, um, Ringo had received a death threat in Montreal. They were gonna shoot him, they said. So they were terrified. Uh, they wanted to, they, and they got out of town right away after the second show. Um, but they went on stage and they did a press conference and, and I hung around backstage and then hung around in front of the stage with all of the reporters. And I guess maybe because of the death threat, they, everybody had um, ID tags around their necks. And I saw security guards coming around checking ID tags, and I, I thought, oh, I'm, this is it for me. And I was talking to a photographer from one of the newspapers, I don't know which one. And in those days, they had those big old press cameras, you know, with the, with the hooded flashes, a camera about the size of a phone book. And I, just as the security guard was approaching me, I, I said to the guy, can I see your camera? And then he, he handed me his camera, I put it around my neck. So the security guard looked at me, saw the press camera, thought, well, he obviously belongs in here, he kept walking. And uh, I ended up on stage with the Beatles, because the, the photo- I went was hanging with this photographer now, he and I were tight, and he wanted his picture taken with the Beatles. So he gave me the camera and taught me how to use it. So I took his picture with the Beatles in the background, and then I had him take my picture. So somewhere in the morgue of one of Montreal's existing or non-existing newspapers is a picture of me um, standing beside the Beatles uh, 
which I really should go and search out. It would be wonderful to see that. That's my life behind stage. Thank you to Stuart McLean for sharing his story. I recorded with Stuart when he was at the University of Calgary receiving an honorary degree, and he was very generous with his time and donated his $1 to our funding drive in October. Thank you again, Stuart. You can hear his show, The Vinyl Cafe, weekly on a variety of platforms. For more information, head to cbc.ca slash vinylcafe. And that's it. Thanks for listening to this episode of The $1 Story Contest. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the podcast, head to iTunes and search $1 Story Contest. It should pop up. Thank you to everyone who has submitted a story to the contest so far. Please keep the submissions coming. If this is your first time listening to the series, the idea is pretty straightforward. It starts with people, which, hey, yes, absolutely includes you. People emailing me an outline of their best story. Now, I know best is a pretty subjective term. I recommend you don't get hung up on it. I certainly haven't. I'm really just looking for stories that should be shared. Your stories, stories that spark laughter, reflection, maybe some tears, and maybe just a little smile. Once I've selected a story, we figure out a way to have the storyteller, who, yes, is technically the winner, record it. Then I tinker with it and give the winner a whole dollar out of my pocket. So if you haven't submitted a story yet, why wait? You have absolutely nothing to lose and a whole dollar to gain. Please email me an outline at $1story at gmail.com. That's $1story at gmail.com, the word one, not the number one. Thank you again for listening, and thank you and congratulations to this episode's winner, Stuart McLean.